Welcome back to Tips with True. I'm Brian True, your boy, and today we're going to be showing you how I edited this image. Fast forward style. Take a look. All right, so here we go, guys. This is an image that my wife and I posted on Instagram. Uh, it was a very quick portrait that we took in our basement studio. She was doing some makeup tutorials with her friend on Instagram Live, and she wanted to just go ahead and take some portraits while she had her face all done up. And you know me, I love taking shots anyway, so I said, let me go ahead and take some shots of you while your face is done up. Now, what I'm not gonna do is, I'm not gonna sit here and take you step by step with everything that I've done from start to finish with this image. But what I will do is I will go through each step that I did and why I did it. Because I figure that if I tell you why I did the step, that's a little bit more beneficial than you seeing me go from pixel to pixel with clone stamping and healing brush and dodging and burning. But I'm gonna tell you why I did each one of these steps. All right, here we go. So here we are, this is the image. This is the exact same image that was posted. Exact same Photoshop session and everything. So I'm gonna take you back to ground zero. If you don't know shortcuts, there's some videos out there with shortcuts, but I'll try to remember the shortcuts that I use as I'm doing this. Boom, background layer. Uh, option, alt, click if you're on the Mac. I duplicate my layer. Boom, layer duplicated. I go straight to frequency separation. There are several videos out there about how to do frequency separation. When I do frequency separation, what I do on my skin layer is I use the mixer brush tool. Don't go too ham on it. These are my mixer brush settings. I just use that to smooth over the difference between the lights and the darks or between one color to the next. That's pretty much all that I do. Second thing is I go to my texture layer and on my texture layer, I have the healing brush tool and I go out and I take out any of the blemishes that I are, that I am offended with on her skin tone, in her skin. All right, next thing. So you see where we were? This is where we ended up. All right, I take a stamp of that layer and then I go to Imaginomic, which is a plugin that I have that I like to use. And Imaginomic, once I'm done here, I export this, it comes in just like this, just so you can see, boom. And as you can see, the transparency in this is very, very light. I'm all, I'm all the way down in, I'm all the way down in 31% transparency, opacity, pardon me. So it's, it's hitting it very, very lightly. Clone stamp, not clone stamp, but uh, stamp that, stamp those layers into a new layer. I go to levels. I want to brighten up my background a little bit, so I go to levels. And I brought my background, I brought my highlight part me down to about right there. Simple. Then I go into my curves. I do my curves a little bit differently than some people do their curves. What I do is I take my curves adjustment layer or dodging and burning. Let me say that. I do my dodging and burning a little bit different than most people do theirs. So I take my curves adjustment layer. And I come in here and I bring it up. Right now it's at 32%. I bring it up to 100. That's what it looks like out of the box, right? Well, not out of the box. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you what it looks like out of the box. Let me go in here, go into my blend modes. And you see here, I've taken this part right here where it says underlying layer, and I've taken it all the way over to the right. So this is where it started, right? It's completely bright, too bright. So I bring my layer over here and you see what it's doing is bringing the highlights over. Then I click Alt, drag that over just to smooth it out a little bit more. And boom, there we go. And the same thing I do with the dodging, I mean the burning, you just go the opposite way. See, just go the opposite way. Boom. That's that. That's that group. And then we go to my color toning. 
Some people do their color toning very minutely. For this particular image, I'm not going to do it that much. So I take a hue saturation and adjustment layer, plain out of the box, straight, straight up and down, zero, zero, zero. And I take this and I put it to color burn. And I take the fill all the way down to 9%. For this image, I took it all the way down to 9%. You could go higher, you know, but this is what it looks like straight out of the box. But I take it down to taste, for my taste. For this image, I said like nine is good. And I did the same thing with the color dodge. Another hue saturation adjustment layer, hue and saturation adjustment layer, pardon me. And I took it down to about a six. This is what it looks like straight out of the box. Entirely too much, right? Take it down to about a six. That's to taste. And I do one last hue saturation adjustment layer just to bring down the saturation. I took it down to, for this image, I took it down to about a minus eight. Next thing, I have a regular curves adjustment layer that I put a mask on and I do this just for the eyes. And you can see what I've done to the eyes. This is before, this is after, before, after, because I really like for the eyes to pop. All right. All right, next thing we do is, what layer is this? This is my, oh, uh, what layer is this? Let me see if I can go in here and see what it's doing. I can tell you what this layer is. Oh, this is sharpen layer. So take the layer, stamped it, went in here, and I went into the sharpening filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, sharpen that layer. But I only sharpen, it looks like the eyes and the lips. Only thing I sharpen. All right, stamp that layer again. And we have some areas around here where the lipstick is that I wanted to fix. So I use my clone stamp layer. And uh, nope. Oh, yeah. Clone stamp layer, and I adjusted those a little bit. And stamp that layer again. What do we have here? Oh, no, 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 no. This was adding some color. This is just color, pardon me. Added some color to the lips. Stamp that. Came in here, and I fixed the rest of the areas of the lips with my clone stamp tool. That's what I did there. Here, I fixed a little area on her cheek that I wanted to blend in a little bit more. See that? It's right here. Boom, boom. Stamp that layer. And I did one last frequency separation just to clean up a little bit more of her skin. So you see what I did there? Not that much, not that much at all. Stamp that layer. And what did I do up here? Oh, some more of the lip that I wanted to fix down in this area right here, if you can see that. Just blend that up, move that over a little bit more. And this right here, I just wanted to blend in her hand a little bit more. So I took that, I blurred it out a little bit, and all I did was just blend her hand in a little bit more. Not going ham, but just blend it in a little bit more. And lastly, we added some finishing touches with this little fade out effect that I like to do on the curves. You see it here. So this is normal and this is with the curves and without, without, with the fade, without, with the fade, without. And that's how we got that image, ladies and gentlemen, from start to finish. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. If you would like me to do a detailed tutorial about how I go in and decide what blemishes I want to remove or accentuate, et cetera, not accentuate, what blemishes I want to remove and what features I want to accentuate, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a, a from start to finish edit on one of the images. But for here, I just, for now, I just wanted just to show you the global perspective and the reasons behind why I do what I do to an image. But if you want me to go into detail, I most certainly will. But I think there are enough uh, tutorials out there to show you how. But if you want to see how Brian True does it, most certainly we can do that for you guys. Until next time, love, live life. Keep shooting.